Hi, I'm Holly and you're watching Calcine TV live from Sydney. This is the Mid-Market Pulse. Let's get started with the Mid-Market Commentary for today and see how the ASX 200 traded by lunchtime. Australian shares traded high up by Thursday afternoon, pairing early losses led by strong gains in realty, tech and healthcare stocks. The market witnessed cautious trading out of the US inflation data due tonight. For more clarity on the Fed's policy outlook. The ASX 200 is trading higher by 31.60 points or 0.43% at 7,301.80. Earlier today, the index opened marginally lower down 4.60 points to 7,265.60 after subdued overnight trades on Wall Street. During the day's trade so far, the index rose as much as 0.45% to hit a high. Over the last five sessions, the index has gained 0.57% and is currently 0.45% of its 52-week high. On the sectoral front, nine of 11 sectors were trading higher, with AREIT gaining the most, rising as much as 1.92%. Other sectors that were trading higher include information technology, industrials, consumer discretionary, healthcare and telecommunications services. Bucking the trend, energy was the worst performer on the ASX with 0.58% loss. It was followed by materials, which is down 0.38%. And let's focus on the top gainers and losers. Australia-based fintech company IRESS Limited is the top percentage gainer on the ASX, rising 9.13% to $11.95. Some of the other top gainers are ResMed Incorporated, Unibail, Whitehaven, Rodamco, Westfield, and EML Payments Limited. On the other hand, Monodelphus Group Limited, Wally, Corporate Travel Management, Hogan.com and Reese Limited are among the top laggards. Well, let's now have a look at the shares that are in the news today. First up, the share price of Austal Limited drops 0.86% to $2.30 after the Australian Securities and Investments Commission initiated civil penalty proceedings against the company and its former CEO, David Singleton in the Federal Court of Australia. The ASIC is seeking civil declarations that Austal contravened its continuous disclosure obligations as well as the relevant misleading and deceptive conduct provisions of the Corporations Act 2001 and the ASIC Act 2001. The proceedings allege that Austal was aware as early as June 4, 2016 of the need to make a material right back of work in progress attributable to the LCS program. ASB made its announcement notifying of the right back on the 4th of July 2016. Also, Singleton has been alleged that he was involved in the company's contribution of its continuous disclosure obligations and failed to discharge his duty. Next up in the news, shares of Rare Earth Minerals Miner, American Rare Earths, gained as much as 6.2% to 8.6 Australian cents on buying Scansium mineral rights from Zenith. The company has acquired Scansium mineral rights over the Split Rocks project in WA from Zenith Minerals Limited. As per the term sheet, Zenith has agreed to grant ARR an exclusive option to acquire scantium minerals to a maximum depth of 50 meters from the surface within a portion of its split rocks project. And the next stock, cloud and software business firm DC2 Limited, has issued an update on its DC Modular Collie project whereby a number of positive developments have been achieved, which take the project closer towards potential future commercialization. Following the announcement, shares of DC2 is trading 1.6% lower at 29.5 Australian cents. 
And moving on, Raphaelis Resources Limited has announced that the McCleary property has received funding under the 2021 Yukon Mineral Exploration Program administered by the Yukon Geological Survey. It also received a Class 1 permit approval in order to start this field session exploration activities. Shares of Raffaella Resources are down 2% and 9.5 Australian cents. Next in the news, Centuria Capital Group has acquired a 14-level $224 million office building in Footscray, Victoria for a new unlisted fixed-term single-asset fund, Centuria Government Income Property Fund or CGIPF will seek to raise $133 million, which is Australia's largest single-asset retail capital raise within the past 15 years. Boosted by the development, shares of Centuria Capital rises 0.4% to $2.70. Well, before I share more trending updates from the mid-market trading session, it's time for a short break. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Hello and welcome back. I'm Holly and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Mid Market Pulse. Let's have a look at some more ASX-listed companies that are in the news today. ECS Botanics Holdings shares fell 2.27% to 4.3 Australian cents despite reporting strong sales growth. The company, in a filing to ASX, said that the Victorian facility, which recently completed its first commercial harvest, has recorded current quarter sales of 0.5%. 543 million products including medicinal cannabis premium dried flour biomass and oils all manufactured from cannabis cultivated at the facility besides the company expects the sales of its cannabis products to reach two million dollars by the end of this year driven by new customer contracts and increasing demand for Australian grown medicinal cannabis products Next up, shares of John's Lion Group Limited gained as much as 5.3% to $4.40, their biggest intraday percentage gain since the 28th of April. After the company upgraded its financial year 21 revenue and EBITDA guidance, this was driven by improvements in its core business as usual, services and a significant recovery in its operations primarily in the northern New South Wales and southeast Queensland region. The building services provider has upgraded its financial 21 EBITDA to $52 million, a 10% rise from its prior outlook of $47.4 million for the same period. The company sees this year's revenue to be $558.2 million, compared with its earlier 524.1 million expectations. And next up, the share price of Advanced Human Imaging jumped as much as 4.8% to $1.32, snapping three consecutive sessions of losses. The body scanning app Maker said it had signed a binding term sheet with Toronto-based digital health provider Qubit Incorporated that developed FitTrack. Cubit's application, FitTrack, is a preventative health screening app. 
As per the company, the integrated technology will be called FitScan, which will enable users to assess wellness and predict potential health risks. Let's see how the Asian markets open today. The Asian markets are trading higher with marginal gains in the opening deals, barring China, following subdued cues from Wall Street, which closed on a mixed note in the overnight trades. Investors remained cautious ahead of data on U inflation and job claims, stated to be released tonight. The mainland Chinese stocks are trading lower, with the Shanghai Composite dropping by 0.1%, and the Shenzhen component falling by 0.02%. Investors reacted to China's factory gate prices, which hit 12-year high in May, driven by a spike in commodity prices. The producer price index, or PPI, which indicates the prices that factories charge wholesalers for their products, spiked 9% in May. Meanwhile, the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, a measure of retail inflation, climbed to 1.3% in May, up from 0.9% in April. The rise in prices raised concerns that inflationary pressures could spread globally and could force central banks to tighten monetary policy, derailing global recovery. Japan's Nikkei surges 0.4%, while Seoul's Kospi trades higher by 0.32% and Taiwan's weighted index gains 0.40%. Also, the Straits Times Index in Singapore climbs 0.20%. In the overnight trade on Wednesday, the Dow Jones fell 0.4%, the S&P 500 dropped 0.2% and the Nasdaq slipped 0.1% lower in the overnight trade. Well, before I share more trending updates from the mid-market trading session, it is time for another short break. New Zealand is unique, and Kalkine TV is here to bring you all the latest news and trending market updates. Streaming across multiple platforms, so no matter where you are, whether it be at the beach or on the farm, you can count on the team here at Kalkine TV to be your home for accessing the latest valuable insights into global issues that are affecting New Zealanders. Subscribe to our channels across YouTube, Facebook, also visit kalkine.co.nz. Broadcasting from Kalkine Media Studio in Australia and I'll be hosting the new Kalkine Wellness Show. The half hour show will cover topics from how wellness as a concept has become even more significant during COVID to how becoming vegan may improve your health and much more. We are excited to showcase our live streaming show to our audience of millions overseas and in Australia. Tune in to Kalkine TV and join me. Hello and welcome back. I'm Holly and you're watching Calgary TV live from Sydney. This is the Mid-Market Pulse. Let's move on to the crypto market which remained in an upbeat mood today after El Salvador officially adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. The crypto market witnessed a surge in buying with all the major coins including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin and XRP flashing in green. Market sentiment got a boost after El Salvador officially adopted Bitcoin as legal tender after Congress gave the nod to President Nayib Bukele's proposal to embrace the digital coin. With this, the Central American nation becomes the first country to adopt the official Bitcoin as a legal currency. Reacting to the news, the price of Bitcoin jumped as much as 15.75% in the past 24 hours of trading. The world's largest crypto moved from a low of 32,437 to hit an intraday high of 37,609.
5.46, registering a growth of 15.75%. Parting some losses, the world's largest crypto was trading at around 12% higher in the afternoon trading session. In a similar trend, Ether, the second largest crypto, also trades higher by 4% at 2,587.76, while XRP surges 5.5%. The meme currency Dogecoin also trades higher by 5.87% to 33.93 US cents. The decision of El Salvador's government to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender has lifted market sentiment which was dampened by China's continued pressure to tighten its regulation of cryptos. China's Qinghai province, the coal-based crypto mining hub, has imposed a ban on virtual currency mining operations, as per a government order issued on Wednesday. Well, that is all for the news right now. Keep watching Kalkine TV as we bring you the latest in the news and trending market updates live from Sydney. This is Holly Shields signing off.